Hi, my name is Katie Yeager and I am a double major at Virginia Wesleyan in um, political science and communications. Um, I did this fourth day project with Dr. Jackson for her um, children in media class. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen so that I can get my project up. So here's my project. Um, oops. Here's my project. How are young Instagram users impacted by the use of environmental conservation focused marketing content? Um, I wanted to start off by defining what I considered environmental conservation content. Um, so for the purpose of this study, I operationally defined environmental conservation content as any post on Instagram by a brand or a brand ambassador that promotes environmental conservation or a product that contributes to environmental conservation. Um, just to introduce how I got the idea for this study, I read a research article by uh, Nicolina Kau and Fua. In 2020, they used three surveys about online media usage and preferred user content to examine how values impact the kinds of activities that web, and us web users engage with. Their study determined that personal values do have a major influence on content that is taken in and shared by social media users. Another observation that they made was that individuals with conservation-based values are more likely to share on social media about a product and that this action makes them feel more in control of their product intake. So I really liked this uh, study. I found it very interesting. So I wanted to look into the limitations of their research to see what I could build on um, top of what they had done. One of the biggest limitations that they noted in their research is that they studied Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram all within the same research project. And that made their um, data very varied. And that was because there's a lot of different features between the platforms and people get a lot of different um, gratifications out of the different platforms. So it was really difficult for them to distinguish how those platforms actually impacted the brand activism amongst the users. Um, the scholars also noted that within their study that the specific product categories were not examined enough in depth, um, so there needed to be further research into the individual categories of products. So that's why I decided to narrow it down to conservation um, marketing and environmental conservation products. Um, I'm building on the study to understand how children are impacted by this form of marketing because that is a demographic that they did not address. Um, I think that um, one of my sources noted that children are a forceful consumer group and that they have the ability to be a catalyst amongst families and their consumer habits and that they also form lifelong habits from early consumership. And that's Easterling and that um, sources in my references. So that took me to my research question. How are young Instagram users impacted by the use of conservation focused activism marketing on the app? Um, so I did a, quite a bit of research on this. I have um, a lot more sources than just these three, but I thought that these three points were really uh, influential to my hypotheses. And um, so I want to share those with you right now. So first of all, people, including children, sort through and prioritize their plural values. Interpersonal relationships and connection to societal values are major influencers in the human process of developing relational values. Number two, social media allows for online communities to form that causes members of that group to factor in the interests of the community into everyday decisions. So comparing and competing on social media are explained to be major motivators of behavioral change. And three, influencers create trust between themselves and their audiences and market not only products, but ideologies as well. So based off all my research, I formed two hypotheses. My first hypothesis was when companies post environmental conservation valued content on Instagram, that children are more likely to adopt those values and believe that conservation is important. Hypothesis number two is that companies using influencers, also known as brand ambassadors, the terms are interchangeable, but companies using influencers to promote environmentally friendly products will create trust between child consumers and the brand that is being promoted. So I needed to figure out how I was going to um, measure and 
find data on this. So I picked a qualitative interview style um, that fits within the interpretive paradigm. And within those interviews, I looked for patterns between children's user experiences on Instagram and how environmental conservation content on the app influenced the way that they think about environmental issues. I pulled from Nicolina Cow and Fu's surveys techniques when I was constructing my interview questions because I um, really did think that they did a great job with their survey techniques. However, because I did choose the interpretive paradigm for research, there was a lot more flexibility within the interviews to have emergent design, whereas within a survey that is a lot more rigid. Um, so I really liked that. Um, about my method because it allowed for a little bit more conversation and for me to dig a little deeper in conversation when um, I felt like we were on the cusp of getting to the root of what I was trying to study. So for procedure, at the beginning of each interview, the subjects were asked general questions about Instagram usage and the interaction with environmentally value-laden content. The subjects were unaware of my research question and hypothesis that I was focusing on, but I did define to them what environmentally, environmental conservation content was like and like gave them an example so that they knew what we were talking about. I conducted the interviews through Zoom. I covered all of the questions with each participant and I recorded and labeled the interviews as participants A through F. The study consisted of three boys and three girls within the ages of 14 and 17, and they are all students enrolled in TCA Spring 2021. So for the results, Subject A and Subject B spent less than an hour per day on Instagram. Subjects C and D spent about an hour on the app, and E and F said they spent over five hours per day. On average, the subject said that on a scale from 1 to 10, that they cared about the environment at an 8. And five six of the subjects said that they like, comment, or share content posted by companies that endorse environmental causes. And every single one of them said that they were more likely to interact with content that is eye-catching and fun to look at, which wasn't surprising. But moving on to more of the results from the interviews. <clears throat> so all six of the subjects said that they had a moderate interest in environmental issues before getting Instagram. And three of them said that after getting Instagram, their interest in environmental issues became strong. One said their interest became weaker, and the other two said that it remained the same. None of them purposefully follow companies or influencers that post ads or endorse a brand. The two subjects that spent less than an hour per day on Instagram said that they did not see a high amount of environmental content, but the subjects that spent over an hour said that they all saw a high amount of environmental content. <clears throat> Lastly, all of the subjects said that they do not feel influenced by companies posting online or influencers promoting brands. All of the subjects said that they would rather purchase a popular brand rather than purchase a new brand just because of their conservation efforts. They all said that advertisements might influence others to make a, pur a purchase, but that they scroll right past, um, specifically influencer advertisements and brand ambassadors. <clears throat> Half of the subjects said that they felt like content on Instagram is targeted towards the teenage demographic, two said it targets adults, and one said that the content is for all general ages. So in conclusion, I do believe that Hypothesis 1 was supported because amongst the users who used the app often, their interest in environmental issues raised from moderate to strong. And those were the same individuals who said that they saw conservation content on the app often, and the same individuals who said that they used the app for more than one hour per day. Hypothesis 2 was not supported because all six of the subjects denied being impacted by influencers and ad content on the app. There was no link between sponsor-influenced content and trust amongst teens who saw the content. And that really surprised me because a lot of the research that I did about brand ambassadorship and um, that form of marketing, it seemed like that was one of the main ways that um, companies did try to target teens. So um, going forward, I did have some limitations, one of them being that I used non-probability sampling. And so my research is not generalizable to the greater population. Um, and that's fine because we did, I gained a lot of insight to how um, the content did affect those students from TCA and that's still valuable, but it's just not applicable to um, 
of the larger group, uh, the larger teen population, sorry. And then another one of the limitations that really, really surprised me was that I used an example in my interviews of an Instagram post um, by Patagonia where they were um, endorsing the conservation of Bears Ears National Monument. And none of the children that I interviewed were familiar with the brand Patagonia at all. So um, the example that I used became, you know, a lot less relevant at that point. But um, I would probably need to search for a more trendy young brand um, if I wanted to measure that in the future. Um, so here are my references. And um, thank you so much for um, watching my presentation. Um, and have a nice day.